Um, one thing that I say, or my research has pointed to, and I'm curious how you react to this statement, is that Tesla is three to five years ahead in battery technology. Um, so, you know, they have the longest range EV on the market, the efficiency ratio, something that I've talked about on my channel, basically the amount of range you're getting per kilowatt in the battery is much better in Tesla's. So there's lots of clues pointing to their battery technology being significantly ahead. Is that something you would agree with? And uh, do you think it's something they could keep up? Well, I, actually, I don't, um, I don't completely agree with that. Um, um, when I look at the uh, sort of uh, kilowatt per, uh, what was it? You said the... Um, like amount of miles of range per kilowatt hours in the past. Yeah, the, the range per kilowatt. I, 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 uh, I saw some recent numbers on the, on the Model 3, and it's no different than my Chevy Bolt, actually. So, uh, but it's interesting. You don't see it on their slides, um, so that never comes up. <laughs> So uh, I don't um, uh, I don't I don't completely agree, but I, I do agree. I mean, they, they've got a big head start on everybody, and I think where Tesla really really um, do very well is in the battery management system. Their ability to thermally control the battery and uh, uh, and and actually build a, you know and, and and build and sell a very large battery into the marketplace. I mean, they have range because they sell a big battery. Uh, they, they, they have the longest range vehicles because they were able to sell a 90 kilowatt hour battery into the marketplace or 70 at, the, at its lowest in the, in, the, in the original sort of Model S's. Um, the, uh, the Model 3 uh, definitely has, has very good range, but I think the, the range on other vehicles is comparable uh, to some degree. So, yeah, they, they're, there's going to be a lot of catch up still to, uh, to catch up to their, I guess, to their branding, to the, to the position they have in North America, certainly. But um, in terms of their advantage on the battery technology, I think, uh, I think others will, uh, will be not very far behind them at all. Gotcha. I mean, so just to, just to be clear, though, I'm talking about efficiency ratio, kilowatt hour divided by range divided by weight. Yes. Tesla has like yes. a 20% advantage. So I'm seeing Chevy Bolt, 60 kilowatt battery, 238 miles of range, Tesla Model 3 standard range plus 50 kilowatt battery, yet 240. So I kind of wanted to push back on your comment just because I the data <laughs> is that Tesla is actually better on, on that basis. But um, I guess the biggest reason that gives me comfort as an investor is yeah. what are, how are these auto companies structured? They're outsourcing everything. They're hitting up third-party suppliers to buy their batteries. Their cars, the Chevy Bolt is built by LG more than it's built yeah. by GM. So I yeah. think this vertical integration is allowing a pace of innovation at Tesla's battery technology level that is going to make it very hard for people to keep up. Um, or so I'm curious, like, or maybe you think it's an advantage that these other companies are letting other people build batteries. Um, but I'm kind of curious how you see that. Cause I see Tesla taking a very different vertically integrated approach. And to me, that's why they've been ahead. Well, certainly as, as, as a, as a company that started in the industry, um, they needed to be vertically integrated and, and they took that and ran with it and did an incredible job. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's really an unbelievable vehicle that they put together uh, or series of vehicles they put together, but, but you know, uh, they're not the only vertically integrated example. The most vertically integrated, uh, electric car company in the world is BYD. So BYD, uh, and they were at it earlier than anyone, um, basically they, they make their own cathode materials and anode materials and their own foils and their own cells. Um, uh, and they go right through to the bus and the car and everything else. And they had to do that because they were very early in the game. So the, the supply chain wasn't there. And so they developed the supply chain themselves. Tesla was the same thing. They didn't have the battery what they wanted. So they, uh, they developed the battery themselves. They developed the whole uh, architecture themselves, but they still outsource the cells. The cells are outsourced to Panasonic um, and, uh, and, and possibly some other vendors in the future. So uh, they're not quite as vertically integrated as BYD. But I think traditionally, as, as, um, as these, as these um, markets become more generic, I think, across different car companies, you will start to see uh, more outsourcing of these things. As, as, a, as a company that starts at the beginning, yes, they have to do it, and that's what gives them their advantage. But even, even a company like BYD is starting to outsource some of their uh, sort of components that they realize that, well, you know what, we need um, uh, we can't make all of our own cathode material and all of our own nanomaterials. We're going to start buying it from other people. We're not necessarily, we might going to outsource some of our cell manufacturing that we're, that, you know, we don't necessarily bring an advantage to. So realizing where you actually have the advantage and not have the advantage is, is going to be key. As more players come into the market, I think those components will get commoditized and as they get commoditized, they'll get pushed out to, uh, to, you know, tier one suppliers.